Hello and welcome to the Lisp Introduction Review. This is an online version of what I gave to the class on uh, Thursday uh, this past week. And what we'll have over here is um, the slides that I was using. And then over here we'll have an Emacs uh, session that I'll be using to show you whatever uh, some examples of what I'm talking about. First let's look at Emacs a little bit. Uh, hopefully you've all had a chance to install it by now. You can see that I'm using Emacs for a bunch of things including um, a shell. That's where I spend most of my time as an Emacs. Um, it's very useful for a lot of things. You can you know, send mail if you feel like it, all kinds of things. Um, what we're going to do today, of course, is use uh, Lisp and use Slime in particular. And so the first thing we're going to do is type meta x Slime to start Lisp. And uh, apparently I changed something. But there it is. Okay, this is what the, the prompt looks like in Slime. And uh, like any prompt, you can enter you know, whatever you need to in here and it'll print it out for you. Okay, so First thing, let's talk for a minute about what Lisp is. First of all, it, as you may know, it stands for Lisp Processing Language. It's the first uh, symbolic programming language, uh, primarily for symbol manipulation and, and uh, programming. It was an AI language, and still is in, in large, uh, large part. It's the second oldest language in use, uh, after Fortran and before COBOL. Um, part of the longevity of this language is because it is useful for the things that it, uh, it does and does well, like symbolic programming. It also is very good for other things like uh, building customized languages, and you'll often find it as, um, excuse me, as scripting languages inside of other things. Uh, for example, Emacs and uh, and some other things like that. Uh, the current version is Common Lisp, and as you know, I made you uh, get the kind of Lisp that uh, that was compliant with Common Lisp, the ANSI standard. Lisp is an interpreted language. Uh, it was one of the first interpreted languages, not the first, and set the stage for a lot of other st stuff like Python and and uh, things that you've probably used. Um, it's very good for rapid prototyping, as you might imagine, from having used Python, for example. Uh, you can very quickly try out things and, and play around in the, in the uh, read eval print loop over here. Um, most modern Lisp, though, are extremely fast. In fact, they rival C or other compiled languages. If you, they can run either interpreted or compiled. If you're using um, Steel Bank Common Lisp, it's unusual in that it compiles everything. In fact, that's what you'll see if we go over here and say uh, setQ. We'll talk about setQ later. The setQ is some variable to some value. You'll see a lot of stuff printed out. This is basically uh, the compilation of this down into machine code. And then it loads it back in and runs it. And you can see this if I'll we'll talk about this again. Um, let's say plus three, four. And uh, now if I say um, compile, it's already compiled. Let's do a disassemble. It didn't like me. That's because I can't spell. You can see that, no, it just doesn't like me. You can see that I haven't actually edited this or I would get rid of this there. So you can see now this is the actual machine code that this thing turned into. And so many lists will produce this. Uh, Steel Bank Common List produces machine code on the fly, so it's quite fast. Um, there's also object-oriented extensions. We'll talk about those a little bit later on. Uh, in fact, the first uh, ANSI standard object system was Lisp's CLOS. Okay, well, probably doesn't matter that much to you about this kind of stuff. There's some quirks of Lisp you should know about. It's a functional language, um, and those of you who've had 301 understand what that is. Um, the functional language primarily applies functions to arguments. And in fact, I was joking around with the class the other day. Here is the um, Here's the syntax of Lisp. Now you need all, all you need to know, right, is function and zero more arguments. So it's a functional language. It applies functions to arguments, and everything then is a is a function, and everything returns a value. So you could apply another function, let's say fun2 to that, etc. And so function composition is one of the ways that, that you get things done in a functional language. Now in a pure functional language, there's no variables. There are no variables. There are no uh, iteration. Lisp relaxes that a bit. There are the equivalent of variables. Uh, I would hate to program in a language that doesn't have one actually have that equivalent actually. And modern Lisps also include iteration, although as we'll see, recursion is still the primary way that we do some of the things we do in Lisp. So um, if any of you are, as some students occasionally are, tempted to program in pure Lisp, um, meaning not using iteration, not using variables, and just using the basic seven construct constructs that comprise Lisp, um, or that you can make anything out of Lisp, anything out of in Lisp, please don't. It'll take you forever to get anything done. Go ahead and use the language like you need to use the language. But try to keep the functional characteristics. Try to, try to keep the, uh, the idea of recursion alive. Now, 
I mentioned over here, this is the read eval print loop. And we'll call this the REPL or just the lisp listener. That's an, an older term. Um, often we talk about that in, in lisp as this being the lisp listener. And by that I just mean the interpreter. Okay. Uh, lisp is a loosely typed language, extremely loosely typed. Uh, in fact, it probably is even more so than something like Python. And it was one of the first languages that was like this. In fact, it was the first language that was like this. And so a lot of things that you see showing up in Python and, and uh, Perl and other languages uh, can trace their roots back to Lisp. It's in two different modes for us old timers. Uh, we tend to use case insensitive mode. For example, if I look over here and I type in lowercase a, it tells me uppercase a. And I can say equal um, a a. And it says yes. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Um, you can also make it case insensitive if you're if you're fond of uh, those kind of languages, modern languages. Um, and feel free to if you want. Just be just be aware that um, it's you know that there's this mode, uh, and most of the time I'll be operating or dealing with it as if it's case insensitive. The basic elements of Lisp are extremely simple. There's basically only two. There's atoms, and atoms are um, well, probably the best way of saying it, they're lists, which are lists of things, lists and atoms, and then everything else is an atom. Okay, um, Atoms are the primitive data types. That doesn't mean that they necessarily uh, have no structure. For example, numbers and characters are atoms. So are strings, though, with double quotes. And so um, these are all primitive types in Lisp and symbols. Now, symbols are something that most languages don't have even today. Um, and when I've been using symbols over here, so for example, this is a symbol. I use the quote here. Single quote means please don't interpret this, otherwise uh, Lisp will try to. If I just type, if I type this, for example, this is the symbol ABC. It's like a variable name or any other identifier. But we can assign things to that. We can also name functions this. We can do other things with it. Or we can treat it simply as data, as I was doing up here, where I was checking to see if two symbols are the same, for example. And so this is very useful in languages that are meant for artificial intelligence or something like that, or symbolic programming, for example. Uh, the first, uh, some of the first symbolic integration pro programs were written in Lisp or Lisp-like languages. Very useful for that sort of thing, so you don't have to, to, mu to muck around with um, like uh, strings and things like that. You can just represent symbols as symbols. Um, I want to talk, before I go too much further though, that the reason I'm putting that quote there is I'm telling it not to evaluate it. If I didn't put the quote, you'll get this nice error. This is an example of a slime error, though probably you saw that earlier when I screwed up. Um, this is, Lisp tries to evaluate this, and I haven't given this thing a value yet. It's not bound to any value. And so I get this unbound error, unbound error uh, down here, unbound variable error. And we'll notice something down in here. This is, uh, if you're using slime, uh, if you're using uh, Eli or any other interface, it's going to look somewhat similar. What we have here is a description of what happened, a description of the kind of condition. Uh, this is the name of the condition, an unbound variable. Lisp has an exception handling uh, facility where you can catch these kinds of errors and do something with them, just like you can in almost any other language. Again, uh, this is where it started, or one of the places it started. Down here are the restarts that let you do things. So for example, I can try it again, which does nothing if I type zero. Here it gives me the same error because by George, you know, didn't, nothing changed. Um, I can also go back to the top level, which is what you often want, or I can abort this thread, this thread of execution. Typically, you just type quit, and it'll go back. Now, notice down here, we've got the frames on the stack, and you can, uh, you can see these. So at this point, it doesn't show you much, but this was starting from the uh, bottom of the stack. This is where I evaluated ABC. That's what it's actually calling when you type this in. And then this is the error here. It's telling us uh, that the error is ABC and all, all that kind of stuff. That does make much difference. If I get back out of that, I'll just type Q, okay, and um, Control L just to just to move the screen up. All right. Now, symbols do look like identifiers in other languages. We talked a little bit of what it's for. These are actually symbols in Lisp symbol table, which is something in most languages you don't have access to. Sorry, I had to have a drink. Um, there are two special symbols: T and nil. T is true, uh, and nil is false or the empty list. Uh, Lisp, like many other languages, anything that is not false is considered true. So true is T is something that always evaluates to true, but other things as well uh, will do that. So for example, if I um, if I want to say, uh, we'll see this later as well, if um, T uh, print, or I'll just type, say yes, okay, so obviously that evaluated to true, and uh, if I say if nil, yes, that evaluates to nothing, nil, false. 
Uh, but I can do other things as well. I can say if A, B, C, yes, and that will give me yes as well. Because this evaluates to itself because I put the quote there. So it's asking me if the symbol yes is the, the symbol ABC is the same as the symbol is 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 nil and it isn't. So it takes it returns that value of yes. And we'll cover that in a moment. Now most anything can be a symbol in Lisp. Uh, the only real things that can't be they can't contain um, some of the special characters. So for example, I can't put spaces in it because this is the limiter it uses. I can have something like this, however. I could have something like this if you want, or what's more typical in uh, in Lisp is something like uh, hi there, where I've got the embedded uh, hyphen. That's a perfectly fine symbol. I can have that. That's perfectly fine. So is that. Basically anything you want to put in there. There are some exceptions. For example, if I tried to put a colon in there, it's going to complain. The reason it's complaining there, if you look down here, it says package hi doesn't exist. Well, Lisp uses the packages to divide the namespace so you don't have clashes of symbols. This is very much like what happens in uh, Python, for example, uh, where you load in something in a package, or a module might have its own namespace. So, for example, if you load time, if you import, um, if you look want to um, call something in the time package, and you've imported time or you're using the time package, then time dot time, for example, is how you access the time function. Here, we're just using a colon, and we won't talk much more about packages. If you need information about it, any standard Lisp text will. We'll talk about it. So we thought I was talking about a package there. There's a special package uh, that is sometimes useful, and that's the one you're normally in. That's the CL user package. And if I type this, well, that's still going to not give me much. That's going to hate me as well because it's not external. But even though I am in this, sorry, double colon, gets that internal uh, things in the package. And what I just said there was I said, give me the ABC symbol out of the CL user package. Well, I'm in the CL user package, so it just gave me the symbol that I defined way back up here. Okay, If that doesn't make too much sense, don't worry too much about it. Just stay away from colons. Now, uh, most anything else, however, will go in there. So if I want to say abc.d.e, that's, whoops, I have to put a quote there first. But if I do that, it's perfectly fine. Okay, um, If you want to have symbol names that are unusual, and I'll show you that, you can. I can have low, this is in case, case insensitive mode as you see, but if I want this, a symbol named the lowercase version that I can do it. These bars here, these pipe symbols, tell me that this is a symbol, but it can't print it. It can't print it like a normal symbol. And in something like that, don't worry about in turn, that's just saying make this a symbol, which you might want to use actually. Um, I can put something like spaces in there or whatever I want, uh, colons, and it is fine with it. Okay, That's just the name of the symbol. Um, there was something else I was going to say about then and forgot. Oh, if you need a new symbol for any reason, and sometime you will, there's a built-in function called ginsim that gives you back a symbol. This is a symbol that's not in any package, um, so you can assign things to it, but it's very difficult to get things back out of it. Uh, for example, uh, it doesn't like me when I do that, even though that's the same thing. Oh, it does like that. Sorry. I can do this. Okay, cool. So you can get it to it. All right, so that's the, the non-package symbol. Anyways, this is a new symbol with that name. And you, sometimes that's useful. If you type ginsim again, it'll give you a new one, as you can see. Okay, so just a way of getting a new symbol. All right, probably more time on that than we really need to spend. Okay, lists. Lists, lists rather, it's a, a primitive data type. It's built in the language in that sense. Uh, it's not really derived from anything else. It is composed of two, it is composed of pieces, however, and the pieces are called cons cells. Con cell is, a, is basically a data structure that's two pairs as two pointers, as a pair of pointers. Um, the simplest one of these is a dotted pair. And if I say something like this, this is a, this is a dotted pair. Notice it's got this uh, form. We start lists and dotted pairs with parentheses and close with a closing parenthesis. This is a list whose first element, or a dotted pair whose first element is um, the symbol A, and whose second part here, in this case, uh, the rest of the symbol, rest of the dotted pair is the symbol B. Now lists, however, well this is what a dotted pair looks like internally. If we think about this as a pair of pointers, then this one that I, in, that I put over here, the first pointer points to the symbol A, second pointer points to the symbol B. And this is how list prints it out so you can see it. I sometimes find myself using this uh, dot and arrow, this uh, box and arrow uh, representation because sometimes you'll have a very complex list and you might need to actually draw this out. But I'll do it here just for uh, just to show you what it looks like. 
Now, if I have only the first of those, so if I do this and don't put anything else there, that's the list A. If I do this and tell it uh, the second, the rest of it is nil, that's also the list A. And a list is a structure that looks like this with no dot in there. So this is also a list, Okay, for example. That's different than the dotted pair up here. Now what a list looks like, internally, this is what it looks like um, for the single element list. The first element, uh, the first part of the list, the first uh, pointer points to the symbol A. The second point, I'm just, part I'm just uh, putting here is a null pointer, so the null pointer. So that's the list A. Um, all lists have a null pointer as their last pointer, okay, just like you'd expect in any linked list. Lists in Lisp are linked lists. Now here's the, here's the AB list, list AB. So we have a con cell. The first pointer points to the symbol A. The second pointer points to another con cell that is the rest of the list. So remember in the dotted pair, this pointed to a symbol or some other atom. In this, it points to another list, essentially. Okay, And so now we have the first element's A, and the second element is the first element of the rest of the list, which is B. Okay, And we can build bigger things. This would be a list of 1 to n, for example. And uh, this would be a list with an embedded list. So here the first element is 1. The second element is pointed to here by this pointer, and that second element itself is a list, and so it's written like this. Okay, And finally, then there's the third and fourth elements, and then the elements down here showed up as well. Okay, And we can get quite fancy with that. Now, what is this? Well, this would be the list whose first element, let's go back over here, whose first element is 1, so it's 1, whose second element is a list whose first element is A, and second element is the list whose first element is A, second element B, third element C, that's all of this list here, and now the third element of this list is C, that's all of this list, and now we're back up here and the second element is, the third element is 2, the fourth element is the list B, C, and then we're back up here and that terminates that list, okay, so that's the list, okay, piece of cake, right? What about this? Well, this is a little odd, uh, this, again, you have to think about the pointers, we have here a circular, well, not really a circular list, but a, a list with some weird pointers. You can't have circular lists. This is the list, and I'm going to have to make this in two parts, actually. So let me make first, set Q, um, set Q is the way you, you set things. So set Q some random variable A to be the, uh, the list A, B, C, C. And if you think about it, this, the list whose first element is A, B, C, is this part right here. So two element list, first element is this list, A, B, C, and the second element is C. Okay. Now, this list here is the list whose first element is 1, whose second element is, sorry, I'm going to have to do something else. This is how you, all, another way to construct lists, so we'll see that later. The list whose first element is 1, the second element is this thing that I just created, called it A. Third element is 2, and the fourth element is, oops, that's not right, I'm so sorry. First element is A, second element is the list whose first element is A, and whose second element is this list, A, B, C, and whose third element is C. Then we're here, that defines that list, and then we have two, and then this last element of the list is this list that I defined earlier. And so that list didn't like me at all. And why is because I didn't put a quote there. Okay. Oh, of course. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Sorry, that was the wrong place. I didn't put a quote. There we go. All right. So this now is that list. Okay. So it's a little weird. And if I were to reach in here and change this, I would also change that. Or if I just change um, this, for example, the first element of the thing I created back up here, if I change that to be three, and now I, that doesn't show me much, does it? Well, this is that list that I just created. A star will get you the previous thing it, it produced. Star star will get you the thing it just, the uh, one before that. So I'm going to set QB to be, well, if we can see, now instead of there being an A there, there's a 3. And instead of there being an A there, it's the 3. I changed both of these at the same time. Okay? The point was, and I did have a point, was that these are actually pointers. They're not constructing a new list there. Okay? It's not a copy of something. All right, empty list is just this. It's empty list, so it's nil. Okay. 
and um, they're the same thing actually. And so if I went, if I go back over here and say EQ, um, it should tell me yes. Okay. 